In this section, we're going to talk about factoring resource constraint into product mix decisions. Let's first talk about what constraints are. Constraints are limiting factors. For example, what prevents you from reading the whole chapter, doing all the problems that are assigned at the end of the chapter, and being fully prepared for class? It's typically time. Time is your limiting factor. Similarly, companies have uh, restrictions too. They have limiting factors. Um, if it's a retailer, their shelf space is limited. The amount of shelf space that they can use to display products is limited. That is their constraint. If it's a manufacturing facility, you will typically see labor hours and machine hours being the limiting factor. They can only have a certain number of machine hours or labor hours functioning during a given month. So those will be our constraints. And what we're going to see is how do we maximize profits given those constraints. So let's say that a company manufactures three products. How do they know which product to emphasize? They have a limited number of machine hours. Let's say that their constraint is machine hours. They have a limited number of machine hours uh, that they can use to produce these three products. How do they know which product to emphasize in order to maximize profits? Your decision rule is that the company should always emphasize the product with the highest contribution margin per unit of constraint. So if we emphasize the product with the highest contribution margin per unit of constraint, that means of those three products, we are only going to be producing one product, um, which is fine if the company has unlimited demand for those products. Most companies don't have unlimited demand for their products, so companies end up manufacturing more than one product. Um, and the same methodology will apply for multiple products. So you first emphasize the product with the highest contribution margin, then you emphasize the product with the second highest contribution margin, and so on and so forth. Um, we probably won't be looking at companies with 20 products, but we may look at companies with two or three products and figure out which ones we need to emphasize. If you are a merchandising or a marketing major, you will use this type of analysis to analyze what product mix you should emphasize when you go work for a company. Let's take a look at an example. Again, be sure to pause the video and read the question before you continue. Whenever you're given a product mix question, the first thing you need to look at is what is the constraint that is faced by this company. In this case, you know that the constraint is machine hours. How do you know that? They've told you that the maximum number of machine hours available per month is 3,000. So whenever they say statements like that, you know that that is the constraint on this company. The next thing that you look for is how many of each product is made per constraint. So here they're saying that four small containers can be made with one machine hour, and then two large containers can be made with one machine hour. That gives you how much units that you produce per constraint. They want to know what product should the company emphasize if it wants to maximize profits. And then also they want to know what is the maximum amount of contribution margin that the company could earn in a month. What you would do is you would do what we call a product mix analysis to come up with the answer. You would set up the product mix analysis just as it's shown here. You would have two columns, one for small and one for large, and then you would start with your sales price, less variable cost, giving you a contribution margin. Once you have your contribution margin, you'll have to look at how many units you can produce per constraint, and then you get a contribution margin per unit of the constraint, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's start looking at our numbers. Our sales price per unit is 12 for the small, and variable costs are 10, giving you a contribution margin of $2 per unit for the small product line, small containers. For the large product line, you've got $20 sales price, $12 variable cost, giving you an $8 in contribution margin. Now the next is to look and see how many units can you make per constraint. Your constraint, remember, was machine hours, and they told you that Per machine hour, you can make four small containers. 
Also, for large containers, they can only make two large containers per machine hour. Now you got to calculate your contribution margin per constraint. You do that by multiplying your contribution margin per unit, which is two times units per constraint, which is four. That means you're going to earn eight dollars per machine hour. That's what this number means. You're going to earn eight dollars per machine hour in contribution margin. For the large containers, you're going to earn sixteen dollars, which is eight times two. So you're going to earn sixteen dollars per machine hour. Now you've done the analysis, you can answer the first part of the question. Which product should you emphasize? Your decision rules says that you should emphasize the product with the highest contribution margin per constraint. Which one has the highest contribution margin per constraint? Small is 8, large is 16, so you should emphasize large containers. Okay, you should only produce large containers if you want to maximize your profits. The second question says what is the maximum contribution margin you can earn? So let's take a look at that. You would you have 3,000 machine hours and each machine hour can produce two of the large containers. So you are going to produce 3,000 times two or 6,000 large containers during your month. Each container provides you with $8 in contribution margin which gives you 48,000 in contribution margin per month. That is your maximum contribution margin you can earn per month. For those who know math really well, there is another way to calculate it, which would be you would say that you have 3,000 machine hours per month. Each machine hour provides you $16 in contribution margin. Therefore, 3,000 multiplied by 16 would also give you 48,000.